I must admit, I was fairly late to the DxO photo lab party. I knew of DxO from their famous film-like presets that everyone went mad for during that early Instagram era, but I didn't try their software until Photo Lab 6 last year. And when I did eventually get around to testing it, I was impressed by two main aspects of this raw editor. Firstly, its ability to extend the dynamic range of raw files, finding hidden data that other applications demosaicing engines had failed to pick up, and secondly, by its denoise algorithms, which managed an almost supernatural combination of noise removal and detail retention. DxO have just published the version 7 point release, and I've been putting it through its paces, keen to see if the best raw editor has got even better. Let's be clear about one thing from the outset. Photolab is not the perfect photo editor for all photographers. What it does, it does extremely well, but if you've become used to the bells and whistles in Lightroom or even Luminar Neo, then you're gonna be underwhelmed by this app and you're probably not the target audience. In a sense, Photolab is the raw editor for photo purists. Photographers who do not want to change the content of their photographs, but simply bring out the best of them. This is an area of the market that Capture One has dominated for a while. And if you're someone who switched from Adobe to Capture One due to its supposedly superior raw engine, then you really ought to take this app for a spin. To be clear, if adding fake sunbeams and swapping out skies is your idea of photo editing, then this is definitely not the app for you. So much about an app depends upon the effort the developers put into its workflow. It's often at this early stage that a lot of apps fall down. But the good news is that Photolab is a well-coded and cleanly designed app and the thoughtful build of this raw editor starts with the interface. One of the things I like most about Photolab is its eminently sensible and streamlined interface. It issues a lot of the bells and whistles of Adobe Lightroom and key Keeps things simple, a lot of people prefer that. On the left here, and we're in the photo library, we've got a basic file browser enabling you to navigate to the collection of photographs you want to edit. You've got a project section down here, which is like collections. So if you're doing a selection of edits, you can put them all in one of those projects. Over on the right here, you've got your histogram and metadata and any EXIF data that you've attached to it, along with keywords, etc. Once you've decided that you want to edit a particular photo, you click on the Customize tab up here, and we've then got all the raw editing tools at our disposal. And the sensible interface continues through here as well. We've got view icons up here to go full screen and compare before and after and that kind of stuff. And in the tabs over here we have got the light tab and we go to color and then to detail geometry any special effects and stuff you want to add like text and over here which is new for photo lab 7 we've got the local adjustments now where they should have been in the first place on this main sort of workflow series of tabs here as you may have noticed while photolab has a few smart tools there's no heavy ai feature set in the bulk of the processing tools the denoise tools do of course use ai and we'll talk about them in a bit but my point is that this is an app which wants you the photographer to make the decisions not an algorithm. That's not to say that DxO are fully against time-saving tools. Quite the opposite. One of my favourite tools since I first tried Photolab is the Smart Lighting Slider, which you can see over here. On this photograph of a wave at sunset, I have just applied a very basic tweak to the shadows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up this slider and I want you to watch what happens with the dark shadowy area and to the sky and the thing to look out for is the fact that it's it's lighting it's increasing the light intensity to the shadowy dark areas but it's not greatly impacting that area of the image which 
is already well lit, i.e. the sky. There are some small changes here, but it doesn't go overboard. So I'll turn this up and watch what happens. So let's go, I think about 70. That looks like a good spot. It's brought some light. It's boosted the shadows to the bushland here and to the ocean. And it hasn't gone crazy with the sky because it knows it's already well lit. That's the smart lighting slider. Photographers are a tribal bunch gathering under the banner of their camera brand. And the same tribalism often extends to the software they use. But I think that both Adobe Lightroom and Capture One users should download and test this app on their photographs. You might be surprised at just how capable DxO's demosaicing engine really is. To get a better impression of what's going on with the raw decoding, let's have a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. So I've created this rather cramped layout with a Lightroom over here on the left and Photo Lab on the right because I wanted to show you what this demosaicing engine looks like in action side by side doing the same things. What I'll do firstly on this very overexposed shot you can see on the histogram here in Lightroom and in Photo Lab all the way up the wrong end of the dynamic range. It's actually a three shot bracket and this is the overexposed shot in that three shot bracket and if I drop the highlights down here in Lightroom first we can see what has been pulled back so here's before and here's after now we'll do exactly the same thing in Photo Lab and we selective tone nothing else is turned on and we'll drop the highlights down that's a fairly stark comparison isn't it we've got some nice color coming back in here there are areas of the image that have come back here already just by dropping the highlight slider so this orangey area here above the horizon line still faded out there so what we'll do now is we'll lower the exposure to see what Lightroom can retrieve from the image so let's drop this down let's say uh, one stop so minus one there and we'll do the same here minus one but there we go. And as you can see, again, Photo Lab has found information at this stage. It's found color and substance information, actual detail in this area here, which is lacking. And as you can see from the two images, that there's these are baseline edits. Nothing else has been applied to these images. They're just the basic raws. And there's so much more color information in the Photo Lab image, you know, with very basic tweaks so what i'll do is i'll create a mask in lightroom a sky mask so we can just affect that area of the image and i'll see if we can get to similar sort of levels as photo lab getting close so we have an extra stop just on the sky there don't want to go too much further than that because we're losing uh important information there so if i had an extra stop just to the sky we're getting close to what we got in photo lab if i drop photo labs exposure without using a sky mask just down by one more stop as you can see we've got even more information coming back here and more color information too the updates to photo lab from version six to seven are not the most groundbreaking i've ever seen but i don't expect wild flights of fancy from dxo they have however added a lutz feature lutz are a course for color grading it will be familiar to anyone that's ever edited video footage new in photo Photo Lab 7 in the color tab you can now find a LUT grading tool it's located here it uh, comes with 17 and you can of course add your own or download LUTs from the internet LUTs can be a nice subtle way of changing the look of an image without going too crazy into Instagram filter territory I mean you can still push LUTs that far but generally speaking you can use them in a much more subtle way so for instance if we select this one what's a golden beauty you can see it's just some small changes to the, the whites have become much more yellow and you can tweak the intensity of any of these lights to sort of dial in exactly how much you want in there there are some more dramatic Lots in here, you've got some monochrome ones down here. Dick, so haven't listed any updates to the noise reduction features in Photo Lab, but it's been six months since I reviewed version six. And within that time frame, 
Adobe released their AI denoise. One of the things DxO is most famous for is its denoising software, which you can find in several of its products and is in Photo Lab 7. And so I thought it'd be nice to do a bit of a comparison between the new AI denoising in Adobe Lightroom and the denoising in Photo Lab 7. And as a test photograph, I've chosen this ludicrously noisy image of the hunter's moon sunset which i took a few weeks ago which is iso 6400 i took this just to dial in the focus but it's going to serve as a perfect test to see just what this software is capable of because at the moment it's looking like a bloody impressionist painting as i'm sure you'd agree now i've done some baseline edits on this same kind of edits in each application there's a land mask here which i've just tweaked the color temperature on just warmed up the ocean because it was looking very blue otherwise uh, I've done some changes to a sky mask. I've dropped the highlight slightly and the exposure slightly. And I've also made a special mask just for the moon where I've done some more exposure and highlight correction because this was an underexposed shot. So we managed to get some detail out of the moon. It's looking a little bit blotchy down here. I couldn't get this lower part of the moon any better than that in Adobe Lightroom. Let's see how it looks in Photo Lab. So we've got a simple graduated filter here just to warm up the ocean you can see the white balance down here just warming that up a little bit we've got this other control point for the sky which is just doing a bit of highlight reduction and i've also got a special little one for the moon and as you can see the moon's looking a lot nicer in this one not as blotchy as adobe lightroom so in photo lab the denoising tools are in the detail tab we've got high quality deep prime and deep prime xd options deep prime xd didn't used to be available for fujifilm raw files like this one but it is now thank you dxo i have found it's quite an aggressive algorithm i'm going to do a test export in deep prime and deep prime xd because those are the ai denoising tools in the software high quality uses a more traditional denoising algorithm and we'll see what it looks like in comparison to the ai denoise in lightroom the results of my testing were quite surprising firstly i strongly believe that the deep prime xd algorithm is consistently far too aggressive and removes far too much detail from images. I had expected DxO's Deep Prime algorithm to be far superior to Adobe Lightroom's Denoise AI tool, but actually it was a really close run thing. And in fact, I go as far as saying that they were pretty evenly matched. I zoomed right in on my ISO 6400 test shot to see close up what was going on. Looking at this shot of the ocean, it's obvious that DxO has done a far better job than Lightroom. But when I looked at other areas of the image, such as this close-up near the moon, it was clear that Lightroom was retaining more detail. Ditto this close-up of the houses, and this one of the sky, and also this one of the moon. I saw the same results repeated on other high ISO test images, with each app doing better with certain colour and luminance ranges than the other. They're so evenly matched that it simply comes down to a matter of taste. What may swing matters in the favour of Photolab 7, however, is all the other stuff you get under the hood in DxO. For instance, DxO camera and lens correction is second to none, thanks to their vast library of test data compiling their DxO Mark database. They also do color far better than anyone else, including Capture One and Adobe, and they further improved on those capabilities with new built-in color calibration tools using industry standard color checkers. The film emulations in the new Film Pack 7 are far superior to most of the cheesy preset packs you can buy and enable you to precisely emulate film stocks from the entire history of photography. In terms of asset management, it remains as rudimentary as before, with a glorified file manager bolted onto the app. No different in that regard to Capture One or On One Photo Raw. But nobody's going to buy Photolab for its asset management capabilities. They're going to buy it because of its industry best raw demosaicing, lens softness, distortion, and vignetting management. One area in which I feel DxO really does need to up their game is with masking. They're persisting with their U-point adjustment tool, 
which lags behind the myriad masking options in something like Adobe Lightroom. It's not a bad masking tool per se, it simply lacks the flexibility found in apps with combination AI and traditional mask tools and makes the masking process slower and less accurate. So where does that all leave us? DxO have, as I see it, done a great job of differentiating their product range from the competitions. But having tested this software extensively, I've come to realize that Adobe Lightroom is not really Photo Lab's main competitor. It's Capture One. Lightroom is a fantastic digital asset management suite with the superb raw editor built in, but both Capture One and Photo Lab are raw editors first asset managers second. But if I had to choose between Capture One and Photolab, I'd go with DxO's application every day of the week. And that's even after Capture One released a new version with some basic AI masking tools built in. Unlike Lightroom, it's available for purchase subscription free for a very reasonable $229, which includes the film pack emulations. Photographers can be singularly picky bastards, agonizing, for instance, over the chromatic aberration figures for lenses prior to purchase. That pickiness extends to software, and there are definitely apps that are considered to be in. Photolab does not seem to have the same visibility in photographic circles as other apps. I think that's a shame. It's an extremely capable raw editor that's been designed to raise your photographs up without corrupting their integrity. If you can do without AI masks and a fully featured asset management suite, then it might be something that works in your post-processing toolbox. And that'll do us for this video, guys. Have you tried Photolab 7 yet? What would tempt you to switch from your raw editor of choice? As always, do leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing for more photo, video and drone related content from yours truly. And I will catch you on the next one. Ta-ta.